Hello, welcome back. And in this video, I'll be showing you all 14 new features that Microsoft shipped to the Data Factory experience in June 2023. No messing around with this one, the title speaks for itself. So let's get straight into it. We're starting off in the Dataflow Gen 2 and new feature number one is Manage Connections. This new feature allows you to view and disconnect from connections to data sources that you're currently using in your data flow. And that includes ones that you've been using in, as a data destination too. In the future, Microsoft will be adding the functionality to edit existing connections and also add new connections, a bit like you can if you're used to using the managed connections in Power BI. Now, number two is column pair suggestions for merge operations. And it works a little bit like this. When you're merging two tables, after selecting the two tables, if you click on that little light bulb in the top right hand corner, you'll get a suggestion for the key on which to join. Now, I'm not sure how useful this is, to be honest, because, well, I would hope that you know which key you're wanting to merge on. But I think it might be useful if you have dozens of columns or maybe even hundreds of columns and it's difficult to kind of scroll through in that user interface. So that, that's when it might be useful. And that brings us to number three, Power Query Templates. This one is fairly self-explanatory and it's actually quite useful, this one. So you can export your data flow and you can save it as a .pqt file. This can then be used to create other fabric data flows. And you can even bring in Power Query that you've created in Excel and bring that into a fabric data flow. So basically it helps you reuse code, reuse transformation logic that you've built up over time. So that's quite useful. Next for number four, we move into the fabric data pipelines and we start off with the fail activity. Now I know your data pipelines probably run perfectly every single time. You might want to add that extra peace of mind by adding failure activities. Now, if you're coming from Azure Data Factory, you'll be familiar with these, but the premise is that the fail activity allows you to create and throw a customized failure event. Say for example, you're querying a data warehouse table and there's no rows in that table. You might want to throw a custom error message because it's gonna fail later down in your pipeline. And this is useful if you have hundreds of complex pipelines with lots of activities, and it means you can locate the source of your error much quicker and more efficiently. And the message can be customized. So you can add your own error code, 500 for example, and you can add a custom message either through dynamic variables or outputs from previous activities or just a literal string. Next up is number six is the web activity. It allows you to send requests like a get request, post request to REST API endpoints. And if you select post request, you can add in a body in there. And this is quite a cool feature but overall the web activity is a little bit primitive at this point. So if you're making basic API requests, then it's gonna be absolutely fine. But if you want to do more complicated logic when you're querying that REST API, like OAuth2 authentication, or maybe pagination logic, then you're gonna to need to do that probably in a data engineering notebook for now, probably using something like the requests library. Now the web activity is not to be confused with number six, which is the webhook activity, our next new feature. Now these two are very similar, but the main difference is that the web activity that we previously just looked at is asynchronous, meaning that it calls the API and it returns a response. The webhook, on the other hand, is normally used to trigger some external code, maybe in a logic app or an Azure function, for example and it works synchronously, meaning that your webhook activity, when you're defining it, you give it a callback URL in the request body and your data pipeline will then wait until that code has been executed and the callback URL has been pinged. So only then will it continue with your pipeline. Next up is number seven, capacity integration. And in the news release for this feature, it basically says that you can access pipeline consumption data in the admin monitoring workspace in Microsoft Fabric. But in my workspace, the admin monitoring workspace is completely empty. And even though I'm actually the tenant admin 
in this workspace, in this tenant. So I investigated this a bit and it seems like this problem is com common for lots of people. So I guess it's still to come, this feature. And if you know how to solve this, then maybe I'm doing something wrong and let me know in the comments. Then we have number eight, soft deletion. And if one of your colleagues is a bit trigger happy with the delete button and they delete your entire workspace, then fear not as data pipelines will be soft deleted. That means you can restore everything in the deleted workspace for up to 30 days by simply going to your admin portal, finding your deleted workspace and then clicking on restore. Okay, so the last six features are all relatively minor. So we'll rattle through them quite quickly. Number nine is improved error messaging when your pipeline activity fails. Now this includes both when activities fail and when your overall pipeline fails. And you can view a history of these pipeline runs obviously in your monitoring hub. Number 10 is detecting the file format when setting up a copy data activity from a file, in case you didn't know that already, I guess. Number 11 and 12 make it possible to open up a data warehouse or a KQL database after you specify it as a source or a destination in one of your copy data activities. Now this is useful if you want to double check the structure of those environments before you either read data from it or you pipe new data into it. Number 13 is the ability to preview data destination formats. And again, this could be quite useful as it gives you the visibility of the structure of your output destination. And it means you don't actually have to go into the database or the, or the KQL. You don't have to go into the actual environment. You can just understand the columns that it has there within the UI of the data pipeline. Now, number 14 is support for type conversion when staging your data pipeline output write function. And those are the 14 new features in Data Factory released into the wild in June 2023. Now, in general, the data pipeline is an area where Microsoft are working very hard to kind of transfer over a lot of the existing functionality from Azure Data Factory. So as you can expect, there's going to be a lot more features released in the coming months. And if you have any feature requests for the team at Microsoft, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below. And whilst you're down there, why not give this video a like and leave a comment. Let me know which of these new features is your favorite or the most useful, the one that you can see yourself using. And you can do this by dropping a number from one to 14. So which is your favorite new feature? Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.